Hello and welcome to episode 160 of the Rustical Gaming Podcast. I'm your host and GM, Alex, and you're with me today I have... Ben Meredith. Bryn Monroe. Lydia Nicholas. And Helen Gould. And who are you playing? Zolf Smith. Hamish Laharun Al-Taham. Sell Side Badham. And Azu. I mean, you say that, I'm fairly certain you're playing the splattered remains of Zolf Smith. Uh, well, it depends. How many He's hit points have got loads of hit points. Loads. <laughs> loads of hit points. Okay, I'm going to roll. I do, oh, exactly one more hit point than the number of hit points you've got. Oh, God, take a guess. How many is that then, Alex? 92. Ha! I'm on zero, not minus one. Screw you. Oh, come on! That was a good <laughs> yeah, guess, Yeah, you actually though. guessed my hit points. That was very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Easy hit point! <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm well chuffed with myself. Well, I'm abandoning boy. the intro to this episode. That was ace. <laughs> <laughs> Picking up where we left off. We are all in uh, Hiroshima, the massive aeroport city. And we have a not insurmountable conundrum in two parts. Conundrum the first, we have a broken airship that needs fixing. Mm-hmm. Conundrum the second, we have a broken airship captain that needs fixing, Aww. apparently. And we ended the last episode with a trap going off. Yep. With that in mind, Zolf, can you please give me a reflex save? Because that's where we're starting. And what's my reflex at? Good oh, luck. it's not fair. Not very good. I'm not a reflexive person. Oh, no. That's a 13. So probably not the DC you need. Unless it's a really bad trap. <laughs> trap hits. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Oh. Ha, you can't get Brent to do your maths now. It's not a dice. <laughs> okay, no, this is this is acceptable. That's okay. Oh, no. What happens is you open the door, and Zolf, from your perspective, mm-hmm. everything goes white, and then... Oh. Azu, from your perspective... Mm. Oh, to be clear, Zolf, uh, also lots of pain, but we'll get to the pain. <laughs> okay. Azu, from your perspective, it's like someone fired a cannon at Zolf's head from every direction on the other side of the door. Right. Um, first of all, quote from Alexander J. Newell, we'll get to the pain. <laughs> Secondly, do you mean several cannonballs or do you mean like one I am sticking big... with the description that you have been given and we will cross this bridge. Okay. Zolf, you yeah. take 38 damage. Ah, whatever. That's child That's damage. so much! Little kiddie damage. There is the distinct smell of burnt gunpowder and smoke everywhere. The noise from it was deafening and you hear cries of alarm from further down the stairs you definitely hear at least one person yell oh no not again oh dear azu yells it's all right down the corridor and then into the room she says air heart what pain occurred by the way just like all head pain so to go into more detail there were multiple shotguns all pointing to the entrance that indeed were on a string as ben correctly predicted and they all apparently went off. The thing is that you didn't get hit by all of the shrapnel from all of them, but a significant chunk of the doorway is now missing. Uh huh. And there's now a hole in the plaster which allows you to see into the room. In terms of response, you hear. Out. Has Zolf oh. been knocked down? Ooh. I'm going to say that Zolf certainly might have had to take a knee before standing again. Ugh. I think the thing that solved Zolf's uh, problem it was it was it was angled for a head that was a lot higher than his. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I give I give Zolf an arm. Thank you. Right, Earhart. Uh, oh, brilliant! And she's plastered. Right. Yes. Hey, Earhart, where are you? I'm going to get in and have a look for her. So it's really difficult to make out because there's so much smoke and so on. It's definitely a garret. It's even got a sort of gabled roof thing going on. There's some kind of window at the opposite end. However, it's got sort of newspapers and stuff plastered all up on it and some cloth as well. There is stuff everywhere. The word nest feels appropriate for Mm -hmm. what's going on here. It smells like someone has been staying in here far too much. Towards the window end, you can just hear that. Get out! Leave me alone. Mm, we can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your shotgun didn't work. I head over to the window. Leave, leave it. Wh- what, what do I see near the window? There is a pile of... Gnome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. There is a makeshift bed. There is a mattress that's quite, like moth-eaten and the springs are gone and it's blown out in some places there's a pile of sort of blankets upon it and there is a gnome in the corner bunched up with those blankets all over them and they sort of uh, and then point something at you right 
Leave me, leave me alone. Get out. Erhard, Get out. it's um, it's Zolf. Remember? Me? You're not Zolf. Yes, he is. Wait. I, oh. She turns and sees Zolf. Hey. Hey. Get out. No. We need you. And also, you're living like this, which is... I don't have anything left to give. Get out. All right, all right. How drunk are you? How drunk are you? Not at all. Then we have a problem. Right. Well, he's an extremely sober dwarf. I am an extremely sober paladin. We're going to help. I don't want help. Too bad. Yeah, you bloody need it. Right. You just said that you needed my help. Yeah, well, we do, yeah. but you need help so that you can give us help. We oh, need you come, to... come on. Captain... Okay, you, 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 you want my help, you don't get out. Just... No, obviously not. Azu. Yes. I'm thinking, right, as an aside, grab her. I'm right here. <laughs> okay, so grab her, <laughs> take her to our place, let her sober up so she can clean herself up. I'll shoot your knees off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably miss. Azu looks really sad for a minute. There's a loud bang again as she fires a weapon from her bed wildly at neither of you. Told you. How close am I to Earhart? Within five feet. I'm going to step over and take the weapon out of her hands. Or attempt to. She resists. That a grapple check. <laughs> Technically, yes. However, I'm fudging it for one simple reason. Earhart's plastered. (laughs) Mostly I was rolling to see if the weapon goes off. It doesn't. She is completely weak. You pluck it from her hands. It is trivial. It is doink. Just between... In fact, you're that large and she's that undersized. You could lift the weapon between two fingers. (laughs) For what it's worth, you don't recognise the weapon. Okay. It seems to be some kind of mechanical device that makes a big loud noise. Okay. Oh. And holes in things like Zolf. Sal might like this. I put it into my bag and then I say, you can get that bag later. It's extremely important that you come with us right now. I understand Why? that something horrible I have, what, what, what can I possibly have <sighs> that you need? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. This is now a kidnapping and I'll pick her up and put her over my shoulder in a fireman's lift. <laughs> Zolf. You're a kidnapping. <laughs> Earhart is problematically light. Yeah. Oh, ah. dear. Right. Earhart has not been eating properly for a long time. Right. There's no opposed checks or anything. In fact, they don't even really start to argue after the initial. They don't seem to have the breath in them. Oh, dear. Right, we're getting her out of here. Yes. All right. I'm going to have a cursory look around the room to see if there's any sort of relevant personal effects. Yeah, yeah, same. There are. There is what appears to be a comparatively unsoiled, like, clean set of, like, captain's gear. However, you notice that it is clean insofar as it has heavy soot marks and, like, heavy charring on one part of it, but then appears to have not been worn since in any way or cleaned in any way. Mm-hmm. There is the remnants of a elaborate captain's hat, a shattered pair of goggles... <laughs> There is a crate of spent ammunition, and you notice that one of the walls, as you're searching around, is just pockmarked with holes all over it. And there is additionally what seems to be a stash of food, he says in bunny quotes, being mostly sort of like cans. There's maybe a couple left in there that are usable. That's it. That's the the sum total of personal effects in the room. (sighs) Right. If you pick up those clothes, I think Hammer can make himself useful. And then... um... Yes. Let's get her back. We can't do anything until she's sober. No, no, As we you've, can't. you've never met this person before, have you? No. So to describe them for you, they are a gnome, female. They are very underweight. They have comparatively long hair, but you get the impression that it might have been a short haircut that grew out. And they are certainly... You get the impression that they've probably like been injured in the past and haven't really done much about it. I don't mean they're bleeding or anything, but you know people can have a sort of favour aside, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that should be enough to be getting on with. Uh, Zolf, to your eye, yeah, this is what happens if you take the person that you met and then you just try to make their life as awful as possible. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I pick up... Anything that seems relevant? Not a lot. Mm. Oh, I lie. There is a ship's manifest that you find, like, just laying around. Oh, well, I take that. I attempt to close the door, realise there's not much point, uh, (laughs) since there's a massive hole in it. Do you touch the door? Do I touch it? Yeah. Yeah? You are now holding the door. (laughs) 
<laughs> a few very concerned and comparatively similarly unfortunate people start poking their head and looking up the stairwell to have a look at what's going on. It's all right, we're going to help her. Do you want any money? Do you say it to them? Yeah. That All of the heads disappear for a moment, there's some whispering. Yes, please. How much is a decent amount of money to give to needy people in a terrible house? Because I've got like 4,000 on me. I used to know living costs off the top of my head. Bryn, can you remember them all? I mean, living costs for a year for some kind of basic level is like a few gold pieces as far as I can remember, like 10 or 12 or... (laughs) I don't remember the exact figures, but like a single gold coin to each of these people would be enough for them to live off for weeks, I believe. If you were to give 20 gold to each of the people in this building and they were in a healthy state of mind, it might be enough to get them out of the rut. Yeah. As who's going to do that. Okay, okay. I am going to say that in this building there are about 60 people. Times 20. <laughs> 1,200, right? For what? Yeah, for 1,200 gold you have... And, I can't stress enough that these things are more complicated than just buying your way out of a problem, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, But assuming every single person in here, all they're lacking is the cash to get out, that would be enough to get your foot out of the trench, as it were. Yeah, but as it is, she now knows that she has way more money than she she feels like she could ever spend. And this seems like a good thing to do. And at some point in the next couple of days, she's going to tell the Temple of Aphrodite that there's a house where people could use some some support and ears. Sure. Some administration. Yes. <laughs> People start to weep as you give them stuff. They aren't like they aren't fawning or anything like that, but it is it's a level of generosity that I don't think any of them will have ever seen in their lives. Oh. As it was acutely uncomfortable and it's like, okay, let's go now, Zolf. You you basically went into like a poverty stricken house and went, you get a housing deposit, you get a housing deposit for every single person there. <laughs> yeah, they're they're gonna be some crying. As we're walking out as well, I'm just continuously channeling positive energy. Mm. But it's worth remembering where my positive energy comes from, yep. which is a sense of hope. Aww. So that may be useful for people. This might be the nicest thing you have done in this campaign <laughs> as a pair. Oh, I don't know, saving the world twice uh... is pretty good. The world includes people that I don't like, whereas, you know, I, I, I have decided um, I like everyone in this building. Yeah, so I've got seven of them. I'll spend it. 5d6. I also heal, which is <laughs> handy. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, so, hey. You leave the building. Earhart is kind of not even really arguing at this point, and it's just a sack of potatoes on your shoulder. Everyone in the building looks a lot better off than when you entered let's put it that way oh well that's good i am gonna jump back yeah. to cell and hamid on the ship watch situation so what was your plan sorry you're gonna have to remind me since seeing it i remember telling hamid what we needed the kind of elemental trapping thing and uh, yes asking if he could go and find and buy potentially that upping the price if necessary so that we could get it within a week you heavily hinted that i needed to nick it from somewhere i said it was an option yeah. uh hamid <laughs> can i get a diplomacy check please 28 you have the following options in terms of a best option i leave you to judge option number one is to buy a custom part for this vessel as you understand it to be like Everything that you need straight away will cost you about two and a half thousand gold and also will take about two and a half weeks. If you're willing to spend a thousand gold, you could probably buy one of the vessels that's nearby and impounded and then just take the bits that you need from that. If you wanted to just provide the elementals and like fix stuff up, assuming that you can find someone which you think you could, it's going to be similar to buying one of the ships that's next door, as it were. But either way, you also know that you're still going to need elementals. But again, Zolf can tick that box. If I take Skrark with me and Skrark is able to assess the state of other ships that we're visiting, because I, you know, I've decided he has the requisite knowledge to do that, then yeah, we, we will spend the money that is required to buy 
an entire other ship and then harvest the parts we need from it, basically. Let's say you get you head to one of the ships that's derelict nearby. Skrok basically yeah. climbs inside and starts doing the broken table thing. No, no, Skrok, no, no, no. What, what even? No, no, no. And the ship starts to get a little bit smaller until finally Skrok pokes his head up going, yeah. This will do. Then, yeah, then I will just buy it. So okay, you say cool. a, thou- a thousand. Yeah, a thousand to buy a derelict where it won't fly, but it will now have all of the parts that you need, assuming yeah. that Zolf can provide magical yeah, muscle, as it were. <laughs> You're probably going to need to hire someone to assist the binding, but you know there are a lot of people around with those skills in this city specifically. Mm. It's, their, it's their primary industry. Uh, so, yeah, th- there are people around. I suppose we we go hunting for that. Cell will go out and look for that person. S- Skrark approaches Cell. Mm. Um, would it uh, would it help if you had all of the parts like ordered? Oh yeah, yeah, that would be great. Let's talk about different kind of. Do you, do you have an organization method in mind? Because I have two yes. or three that I alternate between. I'm gonna pan away from this conversation just as Skrark asks if you've ever seen locusts before. <laughs> That's not, I was thinking more Dewey Decimal System in terms of... <laughs> I know like exactly what you were getting at, and that answer <laughs> right. is exactly what I'm going to stick with. You'll see why. Hi. I'm going to jump back to Team Earhart for now. <laughs> so are you taking mm-hmm. Earhart back to the hotel? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You do so easily. The maitre d' is professional enough to pretend not to be bothered <laughs> and to offer medical assistance if it's needed and so on. Nope. Um, We've got this in hand. Okay. So short term, what's the plan? Just so I know. So I plonk Earhart down in my bed. Yep. Because we have a room for each of us, so she'll take my room. And then I will cast Restoration on her three times and then do a heal check. And I'm assuming, because I think Azu's heal check is actually better than mine, that, um, actually, no, in which case I will assist Azu with a heal check. So interestingly, first, your mercies would have already acted. I don't have mercies. I'm a cleric. Oh, sorry. I have mercies. My mercies can heal poisoned. Also heals 46. Should I bother to roll those? Zolf burnt so much channel positive energy that the healing's kind of immaterial at this point. She's been healed by what? Like uh, 35 DC. <laughs> <laughs> She's about as healed. So. Look, I- I'm saying don't try and heal her much more or she'll pop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turns out she was undead. Oh no. I won't bother rolling the dice for that then. Yeah, that's fine. I would like her to have the benefit of the mercies, which is she is no longer deceived, enfeebled or poisoned. Yep, excellent. I think you've dealt with almost all of the conditions that I've applied. Well, and I'm just going to plonk on a calming touch as well, which removes fatigued, which has already gone, shaken and sickened. And stirred. Which, <laughs> oh no, I know, I spend most of my time stirred. I can't. I can't well, I'll tell you what. Um, give me a heal check, Azu, at the end. Sure. You can assist Zolf if you want. I sh- yeah, right. Uh, that's a 16 to assist, which I that's, think... It's that'll be sufficient. Yes, yeah, so you get plus two to this, Helen. Okay, that's a 34 and a heal check. okay you have blown through the number of resources that you would spend on a significant chunk of a hospital in a day on a single person on the one hand the healer in you is like oh i could have used those resources on more people in a way that would have been more efficient however you also know that you have given as much help as it is possible to give a person on the medical administration side short of like removing curses which they weren't under or you know bringing them back to life which you already know isn't on the cards what Earhart needs now is rest and someone to talk to yeah whose room did we put her in mine okay Zolf do you want to put her in in your bed or on a couch or oh I, I already plonked her on, oh. on like my bed oh, all right I, I'm like just fully I am moving out of this room now this is Earhart's room <laughs> actually interestingly because of the way the um spells work as well she although still underweight she now doesn't have that emaciated look mm. yeah genuinely you have you have done all of the stuff that is not possible in the real world which is hi should we get all of the physical symptoms dealt with so that we can then make very quick progress magic <laughs> yeah uh, right i'm gonna go get her some food if you want to do the talking i mean i don't know if she'll remember the introduction but i guess technically you're introduced and she's here and you can stop her from leaving so well you know. she, she might want to sleep but well, we'll she's just... already asleep maybe oh in which case i just i do the uh the medical room thing which is i draw up a chair next to her bedside and put a blanket on her and wait oh hang on a minute and i will hand you a Campbell novel <gasps> uh, which thinking. one ben Thank for you. my records uh which one uh the heart beats faster. The heart beats faster. Ah. 
arguably the lewdest of the camels. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I've heard of this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's from my secret stash. <laughs> Someone tried to ban it in Sweden. They didn't succeed, but interesting to know. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm also going to... I'm going to try and recall what the meal she served to us, or like the meals she served to us when we had a, a meal in her captain's cabin. Because one would assume that like she was serving stuff that she likes, and then I'm going to try and order that for her. Aww. I will say, although it was ship's fare to a degree, the best yeah. way to describe it is start with a salad, okay, uh, and then put far too much meat in it, so it's not really a salad anymore. <laughs> cool. That. Uh, well, I am going to give like an actual. I'm going to do a proper uh, like personal order. Sure. So I'm going to use my own knowledge of cooking to be like, if I were going to make a version of that, but like really nice, what would gotcha. I do? In that case, then I am going to jump back to the team ship to see us out for the rest of this day. Yeah. Uh, with the Campbell novels, we're team ship. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to refer to you guys as team heart. Uh, team heart, T ship. So jumping to the team who are working on the ship, the statement about locust becomes readily apparent. Mm. Turns out kobolds are really good at disassembling things. Like, mm. it's like watching a time lapse good at disassembling things. They coordinate really well and can strip a ship down to the bone in about an hour. They are very good at it. I mean, that's, that's cool, but I was asked about, awesome about organisational. I, I, I want my parts laid out like a, like a Lego parts list, not like a <laughs> Lego bag. So here's the thing. <laughs> The kobolds totally are on board with trying the systems, and they're interested with the systems that you're providing, although they are quicker at deconstructing things than they are systematically filing things. So there is a brief bottleneck where there's a big pile where a kobold will occasionally dive in and climb out with one part in its mouth, two in their hands, run over, place into the proper order, and then dive back into the pile. But nonetheless, you make phenomenal progress. In terms of the deconstruction side, it's you honestly are, by the end of today alone, just going to have the ideal Lego setup where you've all got all your parts and it's all colour-coded and everything's nice and ready. If the kobolds are as good at putting this stuff together as they are at taking stuff apart, you may have mm. overestimated how long this is going to take. Different skills. They are very different skills. <laughs> OK, in that case then, is there anything on the RP side that you want to be doing at the ship or am I OK to skip back to everyone reconvenes at the hotel and then the next morning? Uh, no, not not really from my perspective, except that uh, Hamid might sort of see a bit more of a, a kind of, like, Cell's energy is now going all into a thing, so it's not all over the place. Like, it's it's in- actually very yeah. focused and things are moving. Hamid fast. didn't didn't have a lot to do, but he's aware if he tries to wander off, the kobolds will all follow him. So he just, yeah. that is a thing. you know, he just puts himself in the, the corner of the room and kind of watches in amusement. You know what you need? Harrison Campbell novel. Yeah. If, if only he could let himself. <laughs> yeah. That's the real crisis of this story. <laughs> and you know what? That feels like a natural break point to me. Why don't we take a break there and then we'll be back in a couple of minutes. And welcome back. So I am going to start with us back at the hotel briefly. Presumably there is an exchange of information. <laughs> yeah. Although the idea that it suddenly becomes a competition is interesting to me. Oh, one important thing actually for Hamid and Cell is that Zolf has like actually perked up a little bit. So hmm. all of that, uh, those <laughs> positive energy. And everything. Yeah. No, it, it, it turns out he needs a project, otherwise he gets stuck in his own head. Who yeah. yeah. thunk? Entirely yeah. not relatable content. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Does anyone want to RP this evening or do I jump to the next day? So we'll definitely ask the specifics of what Zolf can summon and how long that would last and what kind of bind it. Because uh, Cell has quite extreme knowledge arcana, <laughs> but... How extreme? 17. Nice. Give me a roll on knowledge arcana, actually. I'm going to say only Cell, Bryn, because of the engineering element in this. Fair. Yeah. Only 20, because I rolled a four, so... Eh. It sounds like the stuff that he's got will be applicable, but you are going to need some assistance. You're not going to be able to do it on your own, even if... And Hamid won't count as assistance. You need expert yeah. assistance. Yeah. But again, in an airport... Sorry, in an aeroport, you're probably going to find them. There will be one on staff just to deal with situations that turn up. Yeah, and, and from my perspective, I can summon basically any type of elemental you want, because I can get to, to large ones, which is like the core kind of 
the big lads and i can summon them for just under a minute it's nine rounds so how many times can you summon in one day fifth level spells i can uh, if we want a large one specifically i can do it once <laughs> Okay. Okay, cool. It's the so that's, that's a useful limiting factor yeah. to know. If we want medium ones, I can do it a bunch of times. But yeah. Now, Cell, I am going to give you this for your Arcana check. You know the following. Mm-hmm. The normal choice would be an air elemental. Mm. Earth elementals, they're right out. Ship will go down. <laughs> now, fire elementals, interestingly, will get you where you want to go faster. But it's a one-way <laughs> trip. <laughs> it is a one-way trip. Other more obscure elementals tend to have their own complications. Mm. Water, we're just not into. That would just be a ship, ship, and like we're so over ship, ships. Yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. Did that is last a, week? A, a water elemental. Basically, what you end up there with a ship that won't ever float. Uh, we could we could do an ether elemental if you want us to telekinetically throw the ship <laughs> instead of flying it. Just all jokes aside, meta game. If you want to have a more interesting cocktail of elementals beyond air, I am open to this as a concept and will adjust how the ship works accordingly. If if Zolf raises the ether elemental thing, Cell will start doing sums. I will I will have a chat because like there there are a lot of large elementals because Pathfinder is Pathfinder. So do we want a Mitsu? I have no idea what a Mitsu is, but oh cool. It's 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 a barbed wire elemental, but made of tentacles. Great, I'm going to get off the Mitsu page. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say this. This might now be a conversation for Zolf and Cell to have, where Cell's like, "What about this one? I mean, yeah, that's an elemental. What about this one? Yeah, that's also an elemental." You, you you extremely want a tumble spark because it's both an air and electricity combined elemental. <laughs> okay, we are going to address this off this recording. Because we are not at the stage to make use of it yet. <laughs> yes. Is anyone going to be dealing with anything else this evening? Azu, for your benefit, Earhart's out of it. You don't reckon Earhart's going to wake up till tomorrow. All of the healing in the world doesn't remove the need, need for sleep, rest. Yeah. It like The thing is, is rest and sleep even not necessarily the same thing. Like Technically, yes, you have dealt with all of the stuff, so Earhart could work for a full day, but that's not the same as rest. Yep. And this is someone who has been beating themselves up for a long time. Yeah. Aww. I think Azu's just going to stick with her, light some incense, do some okay. thinking. Okay. In that case, then, I am going to now dive out of RP and into sort of a bit more metagame style. Okay. Which is, from my perspective, on the ship side, thanks to the combination of money, being sensible, doing your research and so on thanks to Zolf being able to provide an elemental a day, I think that even if Earhart is not factored in, you will be able to get something airworthy in a week. Mm-hmm. With the Cobalt's doing a lot of the implementation where it's like, okay, you see these little six-sided bolts? I want them on every single one of those holes. Mm-hmm. Off they go. But they're not going to be good at the sort of strategic decision-making in terms of the engineering. Zolf, with you just burning major spells on elementals, that's going to be the last sort of thing removed. So I'm happy to montage building a ship and just factor in a few roles and to abstract that out over the week. That's fine mm-hmm. for me. I will need, though, there's going to have to be an element of RP with Airheart. Of course, Because yeah. I can't abstract out counselling mm. so oh, I've got great diplomacy and really high with bluff. that in mind what I would quite like to do if I can is to divorce us from hard time for a little bit and just jump to a scene during Earhart's rehabilitation that is more than just Earhart either insulting you or eating okay Unless anyone has anything that really hard they need to do during this week, I'm going to include, by the way, that you all have ta- downtime to like Shop. eat out if you want, go buy some equipment if you want. Mm-hmm. There's no way to make this go faster by just working all night, all day. It doesn't really work like that. Yeah. Because you need air heart because ultimately sell. Um, we need at least two elementals. We need to hire a binder and we have to assume that we won't necessarily get it right first time. Mm. exactly so So. once you factor all these in even if you could just work all night it's still going to take a week that is an an absolute okay also one aside is that Zolf will insist 
that his share of the money is used to go towards any of these like maintenance projects. And things. Uh, Zolf! Yeah, I know. I know. He's. Uh. It's not Zolf that's the problem. It's Ben. He likes not having equipment. It's true. Azu is actually going to be okay with that because at least you're choosing what to do with the money. <laughs> you have told us what to do with it. Therefore, it is still you spending that money. Therefore, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, unless anyone else like massively disagrees, Alex, just let me know how much I spend out of my fifteen k. It'll depend on how things with Airhow go, but yeah, fair enough. Fine. Cool. I am guessing it will end up being Azu that RPs this scene, but <laughs> if someone else wants in, now's the time to speak up. I will be hovering like a, a nervous hen like, in the, <laughs> like I, I will not be getting directly involved but if called upon i will be present yeah i mean yeah hamid probably stops in to say hello to Erhart a few times over the course of the week but isn't really going to get involved in the project at the first half of the week Erhart pretty much just yeah. rolls over and stares at the wall if anyone enters the room yeah gives you the zolf treatment <laughs> also Erhart keeps asking for alcohol azu does not provide the alcohol that's the only time when you ever see Erhart turn is that Erhart getting in her head to let's have a drink and every time you say no, that's where her heart will turn and get a little bit nastier than she really needs to. Is she unwell with the withdrawals? Is that mm. something that needs to be healed? Is that something that can be healed? So That's a good, that's a good point, actually. Basically, the, yeah, here's the thing. With, with the pair of healers that you've got, mm-hmm. interestingly, the way Pathfinder works is you cannot cure that kind of a problem, but what you can do is you can just keep constantly keep the symptoms at bay till it's not a problem anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically a medical patch job, but you can do that. And you have sufficient resources and no drains on your time for it to be feasible, at least. Mm-hmm. What you're effectively doing is you're going, hi, here's all the problems that are currently overwhelming you. Let's remove those off the table. Step two, let's make sure that we aren't having any withdrawals to complicate this. Now let's engage. That's effectively the way it's having to be done. But it, it is convenient. working so far. It really yeah. is. Mm. Isn't it lovely? I love a world that has magic that can be used in a good way. <laughs> I'm going to dive then to Azu yeah. and say it is late at night. Mm-hmm. And for the sake of facilitating it, I am going to say that uh, Airheart has not been stonewalling you, but has just been sort of ignoring you as you just continue to sit there. That's fine. Uh, this whole time, Azu is, is completely happy to just sit, wait. Sometimes th- there's probably going to have been a point where Airheart has asked for a drink and Azu has given her a glass of water <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and that kind of thing. She is very patient. At some point, in it's getting late and you're just about considering calling it a night. Mm. Earhart just quietly says, um, hey, can I have... Um, could you pass me that manifest, please? Of course. Azu is very pleased. This is massive progress. <laughs> 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 she hands it over. Earhart starts thumbing through it and starts to cry. As you suddenly realises, as Helen suddenly realises that the list of all the crew members is going to be in that manifest, isn't it? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> she, crying, but not in a not in a completely falling apart way, says, hmm. could, I, um, could I have a pen, please, Azu? Yes. Azu gives her a pen. Earhart just very calmly starts turning pages and starts crossing names out on the manifest. Just starts going through, very systematically starts at the front, starts crossing out any names that are recurring that are not applicable, starts tallying up numbers again that from the records that started to fall apart a little bit. And you just see her for about, about 20 minutes, then coming on half an hour, just working her way through the maths, mm. getting her manifest up to date. And then she keeps turning, and then she turns one final page, and you see that the next page is a charred mess. There's no paper left, and she just stops tallying up her paperwork and just stares at the charred mess at the tail end of the manifest. Damn. Oh, yes, Ben? I've got a thing. What's Because, <laughs> you know, Zolf canonically loves books. I also want to mention that did Hamid fix her captain's outfit during the thing? Because I kind of forgot to pass you that. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, basically... Hamid has been spending so much of his time sitting in the hangar while selling the kobolds work in the work on the ship that he needs something to do. So he will go back to tailoring, which is so domestic, (laughs) which is making more cold weather gear for everyone and (laughs) fixing Earhart's clothing. But when when Earhart kind of gets to the end of the manifest and like is obviously deeply upset, I will because I've been hovering in the corner and be like, oh, oh, I forgot. And then run out grab something from the other room where I've been like sleeping, run back in and hand Azu a new manifest, which I've bought as part of when I was going on some Campbell hunts during the uh, the downtime. 
sure, sure. I've bought a fresh manifest which looks very similar to the to the old one. And I'll just hand it to Azu to then hand to her heart. Thank you, Zolf. Right. Azu puts it in a drawer for now because it seems a bit soon. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why you put this through the high charisma characters. <laughs> you, use a, you use them as a buffer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just... You're my foot and mouth barrier. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just imagine. Now, now I'm thinking about Grizzop, and he'd be like, "Right, get started." Ah, uh, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Azu says, "Is there anything you'd like to talk about?" I mean, I don't want to. I don't like to talk about it. No. Then perhaps you might need to talk about something. Hmm. Have you ever killed someone, Azu? Yes. <laughs> Loads. Like, lots so of many them. people. <laughs> you ever killed a friend, Azu? Not directly. <sighs> you ever killed all your friends, Azu? No. Hmm. Air heart rolls over and faces the wall again. Azu says, It's my understanding that you may have been hit by some kind of missile. She blocks you out. I've watched most of my friends just disappear, if that's anything. Was that helpful? I'm sorry. I... <laughs> that was... I was... I was I, I was trying to help. I, I don't know. I, I, I can I leave know. if... Um... Earhart sort of rolls over despite herself to see Zolf. I think you might be the worst person at this I've ever encountered. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I... So, no, I mean, what I was trying to say is, like, I I know where you're at. I know where you're at. I don't think you do. I, no, I, it's not directly comparable, I don't think. <laughs> okay, right, um, sure. But... I I mentioned this to you, but hey, I, I killed my brother. Hmm. So, you know, that happened. How'd that go? Well, he died so badly. That's not the bit I'm interested in. You're interested in the bit where I did something? I'm interested in the bit that comes after. Right. How did that go? Uh, well, I'm here. Still. So, you know, that happened. And is continuing to happen. And, like, no, it's not better. It's more distant, but it's not better. It doesn't ever, you know go away but um no grief's not like that you learn to deal with it and you just make sure that you can still do stuff right i don't know as you're better than i am but you know like what like a project or something no i mean a job what do you mean living you keep doing it right you keep going you keep trying to do something like what you know something you care about even if you forget you might care about it occasionally you know end of the world all that kind of stuff their heart rolls back over uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave I'm gonna I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave and Zolf leaves oh as I was about to say you didn't do too bad but like he's, he's gone <laughs> he's gone <laughs> I'm gonna give you a moment this RP is not over I know oh I'm I'm well aware as he says, I'm not sure how long ago this happened for you, and I'm not going to tell you that grief gets better, but like Zolf said, it gets different, and... Grief I can handle. I don't care about the grief. People die, get over it. So what is it that you do care about? It's the guilt. Ah, the guilt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that thing. (laughs) Do you want to tell me what happened? You ever met a marriage crap? Yes. You ever seen one angry? Yes. Were you... Oh. You were hit by one of them. Oh, yeah. My fault. Which one? It's grief. It's grief. It's the one that's turned. I, I I highly doubt that the behavior of an enormous dragon could at all be your fault. I'm pretty certain it can be when someone tells you that you're done and that you need to uh, head off and then you go, no, I can fit one more run in. 
that's not the same thing as things being. And then your first officer says, "Either we turn back or we we lock you up." So then you tell them, "No, we're doing one more run." And then you do the run. You get pretty far, and then all the sky lights up, and, and then everyone else lights up, and. And then you limp the rest of the way, but you are on your own that time. When's the guilt for that go away? What's the right project there? What's the what's the way to live that'll take all that and put a nice bow on it so I can get back to doing what I do? Because I'd really like to know. I'd really like to know. This is not about making things pretty. I think that it is unfair to blame yourself for consequences that you could not have seen coming. What about if you did see him coming and you did him anyway because you thought we'll deal? What about if you were arrogant enough to assume that you were that good that even though every single person knows what's going to happen they follow you anyway? What about if you spent that many years cultivating that much trust that even when they know they're gonna die they go ahead and follow you anyway I'd say that sounds like it was their choice to make Hmm. we're in a war correct of sorts that's one word for it there are always risks in war and one gets involved in such a thing knowing what could happen And that is the consequence that all of us have to live with. Each of those people could have... They could have mutinied. They could have refused. They could have turned around. But it was their choice to stay with you. And you cannot control other people's choices. And knowing all this, you still want my help. Oh, yes. That's my choice. That's our choice. That's a dumb choice. (laughs) It's the one we're making. You're not the sharpest bunch, are you? Actually. (laughs) I don't think I've met you beyond maybe a a shade in the corridor. (laughs) This bonding conversation right here, this is for another time. Yeah, that's a a meta. That's that's not for That's a meta (laughs) insert. (laughs) Cell has been dangling from the ceiling. (laughs) I am so frustrated I removed myself from this conversation because there are so many literal parallels with Zol's backstory and I <laughs> left yes. before I came up. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, you want to talk guilt? Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk being the only survivor of a shipwreck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Is there anything further that you specifically want to say at that point, Azu? Azu is going to add... We all make mistakes and choices that don't go very well, but there's always the opportunity to make better ones. And th- there is an entire world to save, so if you would like to help with that, that would be very much appreciated. I'll think on it. That's fine, I'll be here. Okay. I am going to jump ahead to a little later in the week. We're not going to get in this this episode the roles for fixing the ship up. There's too much to dive into, but bear with me. (laughs) Helen? Yeah? I would say maybe a day or so after that. Well, the next day, Earhart has gone from positively taciturn to just a bit grumpy. And you see that Earhart starts working first on the sly on the new manifest. Hmm. That what starts as a little bit hesitant and a, uh, screw it, why not? starts to get quite fervent Azu will tell Zolf about this and be like I think I think you did help actually oh really thank you for buying the ship's manifest oh um oh all right great um thanks Earhart starts to ask you for a few favors Azu oh yes she asks you for any like if you'd be willing to go to the library to pick up some stuff oh Azu absolutely yes uh she asks for us uh Bit of a, a bit of an eclectic bunch of books. The titles, like some are like almost fairy tales, some are some medical textbooks. 
She also asks for some chemistry books, a very broad range of topics. She gives you a list. There doesn't seem to be a pattern in the titles, but are you willing to go to the library to pick them up? For sure. Okay, cool. This is, again, big step forward. Great. Fab. <laughs> so you head to the library <laughs> and you start picking these stuff, these books up. Can you give me a sense motive, please? Yeah. Go. <laughs> she better not be just trying to get me out of the room. No, she's going to kill a f- meritocrat <laughs> that's her plan give me, a, give me a sense motive which is excellent and exactly what i wanted to talk to her about so that's 18 that's enough yeah ben's pit me to the post three times this week <laughs> at first it seems a bit random but then you notice that one of the fairy tales specifically deals with admittedly we're in a meritocratic land an evil dragon slayer and uh, another one is a lot of stuff to do with explosives and uh, there's a whole chunk of section to do with biology of draconic species and things like yeah yeah what she's doing is she's researching meritocrats Mm. this is obvious to you even by the time you're handing books over to her you're not you're not sure about the specifics but this is the reading list of someone who wants to kill a dragon (laughs) yeah as who knows that there's one that's infected so she's like can't hurt if we can kill an infected dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Your trauma oh. is taking quite dramatic and violent ends, but that's useful to us, so go for it. <laughs> Her writing in the manifest grows more fervent, and just when it seems like it's bordering on uh, mania, she starts to settle. The writing becomes more measured, and things seem to take a shape on whatever she's been working on in that manifest. Things seem to start taking a, a level of order, and she starts communicating properly, and uh, she even is able of like a, a smile of sorts towards the end of the week. Ah, Yeah, as, as things near towards the end of this week, she asks to speak with Azu and Zolf specifically. Okay, happy to do that. Yeah, what's up? So, you want my help. Yeah. Yes, please want me to get hold of an airship whatever fly an airship for you fine and we're building you your one again so yeah we're getting you the airship yes thank you for that this mission we're doing is going to be dangerous right Mm -hmm. Uh, i'm not sure actually i'm not sure how dangerous the sky is well we're flying from here to svalbard so we're gonna hit some danger really oh yes Mm -hmm. okay okay i've got a deal for you on that ship, I'll take you guys anywhere you need to go. We'll need to find a crew, but it's never that difficult. The training is the thing that takes the time. Um, you can learn on the job. I'll take you anywhere you want to go, for as long as you need. What's the condition? You're going to help me kill a dragon. All Which right. one? Well, that'll be Grieve, won't it? Why don't we start with Grieve? See how we go from there. I've just got one thing, right? You thought I didn't know what your guilt was, you know, being the only survivor of a shipwreck and all that. Yeah, well, guess what? I was. <laughs> and uh, do you know what killed all of my crew? I mean, I wasn't the captain, but importantly, I still trust that captain, even though they made a mistake. But it were, uh, it were a big robotic kraken. Do you know who I just killed? Or we just killed? Was the person who created and controlled that big kraken. And do you know what it did? Didn't help. But I'd still do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good out. It's good out. I know you're aiming for it, and I hate to let you have one, but yeah, it's good out. I can end an episode Alex on that. Alex begrudgingly allowed me narrative satisfaction. That's <laughs> yeah, fine, I guess. And then an explosion. No. Um, <laughs> well, that all got very intense. Uh, it's one of your yeah. games, Alex. Were you surprised? <laughs> yeah. You, you did plan this you know yeah. that right yeah. <laughs> Look, you you made this people are always a more interesting challenge than mechanics yeah hey sometimes the people are the reason that you've turned to mechanical souls <laughs> <laughs> hey no lydia it's okay for cell for cell as well like the people are the friends you literally made along the way <laughs> Right, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm interested where this is going to go. I mean, I'm going to have to completely rewrite my campaign so that Ben doesn't have any idea what's going on. But apart from that... (laughs) I can see the Matrix, Alex. (laughs) Bye, everyone. Bye! Bye. Why am I waving? There's no one here. (laughs) 
Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution non-commercial sharealike 4.0 international license. Today's episode was directed by Alexander J. Newell and produced by April Sumner. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Patreon, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill, visit us on Facebook, or email us via mail at rustyquill.com. Join our community on the Discord via the website or on Reddit at r slash rustyquill. Thanks for listening. Hey, Casper. I just had a cat. I found that Casper's just at my door go looking at me sad. Aww. Aww. Yep. What does he want? At this point, you, you can let Casper in because there's no Bryn to to make allergic unfortunately things, right? it's actually quite bad for the equipment on the microphone side ah uh, oh your hair oh, yeah because they're diaphragms and he has a tendency to rub up yeah um. so unfortunately he's still not really allowed in yeah although we've come to an understanding which is i see why he's knocking at 4 p.m between 4 and 5 but normally 4 is the time for him to wake up come into the studio where i pull up a chair for him and then he'll fall asleep on that specific Aww. chair Aww. We're creatures of habit with a very established routine. He is just an old man. We are an old man. <laughs> Hi everyone, Alex here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. Nicole Perlman, Devon, Kaylee Latimer, Little King Trashmouth, Joseph P. Lagander III, Quenevere, Jaffia M., IRQ, Anna Godfrey, Tony Jasper, Obscura Noxia, Blair Riddle, Agatha Bird, Contest Sylvian, Bianca Sofia Ricci, Carly Johnson, A. Skifford, Emily Mundedike, Samantha A. Courtu, Catherine Blair, Hugh Smith, Mariana Jones, Joe, Katharine, Elizabeth H., Kendra, Isabella Silva, Nuka 96, Shy Magpie, Katie Nelson, Sam Keish, TJ Hummel, SDD, Hannah McGinty, Socket, Saint Dominici, Alyssa, Haley, Lane Dolberg, Jamie, Maxwell McCandless, LCR, Samrath Cower, Emily of the Beef, Maddie Christie, Jess McKnight, Chloe Artis, BRK5239, and Sunny Lettum. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash rustyquill and take a look at our rewards.